I believe that it's important to understand that we never want to correct a dog for something that they don't know that they've done wrong, right? So if we say sit, so there's a difference between a professional dog trainer that knows how to apply tools properly versus somebody who goes, I love dogs, I'm good with them, I'm going to train them, get some tools, hopefully it works out. Because that's how you can do damage, and that's where you see the horror stories of the videos online of dogs not responding good to e-collars and prong collars because they're just sized wrong, they're the wrong equipment, they're all garbage, you know, chintzy things. And so <clears throat> the important part to understanding when we're applying tools or we're applying discipline or pressure is very simple. Like, I'll never tell a dog to sit and then if they don't correct them, if they don't know what sit is. People will, you know, like there's people out there that do it that make people like myself who do it right look like bad people because they associate he uses a prong collar, they use a prong collar, bad dog training or painful or stressful. Applying pressure to the dog, like when you see studies, when people put out studies of like adversive um, tools will cause stress in dogs, or you should never use adversive tools with an aggressive dog or a fear-based dog. There's so many different shades of applying tools, and that's all correct, but it's a case-by-case -case scenario. Like if he was aggressive, like and actually wanted to hurt somebody, there's no way in hell I'm going to correct it with the prong collar, because nine times out of ten, I'm going to get redirected on like right. that's a no-brainer right. but when we're talking about like we said is when he's over there and you say come and he's like no and he knows what come is because he's done it a hundred times for a piece of food then what like that that's 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 what i'm that like that's my in installation in the dog of everything is going to be great rainbows and butterflies but what if the dog is halfway across the field and they're doing this and they're looking at the road with the dog on the other side with the busy traffic. And they're like, I'm kind of full. I don't really want food anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Alba's come, Alba's come. That's a problem. Yeah. That's an issue. And so when to answer that question of what do we do, we have to make sure that he understands what recall is first. Okay. We can't put an e-collar on him and say come and him go, what the hell is that? And then wham, he's like, boom. Because then if somebody takes a video of that and go, look, e-collars are bad. Look how, look how crazy that dog is now. Look how messed up that dog is. Um, it's called superstitious association. The dog is now associating poles and trash cans and, and, and all these different things with this shock right. that they did it wrong. And so that's what you don't want to do. And so you have to make sure when we're applying tools to dogs that they fully understand what we're asking them before we can ever give them pressure. And so when he's off leash, we're going to work on recall 50 times to make sure, okay, he's got it. He's not gonna fool me because dogs are opportunists and they'll take advantage of you. But if he decides to say, I'm out of here, you have to make sure that you can correct that dog or give that dog pressure. So anyway, moving forward um, with him, it's very simple. He's a hound that hears toys and uh, smells food from a mile away. And the problem is, is if I can't wirelessly communicate to him, and you guys, you guys felt the levels, right? Uh, no, I'm going to show, yeah, you, yeah, show yeah. you after. Okay. Humans typically feel it um, around three or four. Okay. I could put a three or four to my face and not feel it. He's on a four. He's very, he's very, very uh, in on. I think you grab that tin right there and kind of shake it up a little bit. Just right. Yeah, right there. Yeah, just shake it up. Yeah. So he's like, hey, right. So I'm going to use the e collar to get his attention. Alvis, come. Yes, good boy. Well done. Okay, now, that was just right there. So now, I want you to take this, and that's the same here, put it on your wrist. That's what he was just on. So you don't oh, feel wow. it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, Alvis, come. So, Alvis, come. See, now what? Right. Alvis, come. Good boy. Alvis, come. Good boy. See, now, like, this is a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to condition him for six months with purely positive reinforcement and not using any aversives of, like, 
Oh, yeah, dude, ignore me. I'll be here. Yeah. 20 minutes later, Alvis, come. 30 minutes later, Alvis, come. Good boy. Nice job. Bye. That's a problem, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that's my whole thing is, like I said, like if we're talking dog training, actual dog training besides behavior and using any aversives or tools, when he ignores me, what about he's going what he's doing is he's coming to check in to see if I got anything for him. Mm -hmm. He's got such a nice nose, he's reali he's realizing, nah, I'm out of here. You got nothing for me. Mm -hmm. Now, throw me throw me that tin. Thanks. Now let's go. <coughs> Alvis, come! Come! Good boy! Alvis, come! Good boy, buddy! Good. Yeah. Alright, that's a problem. Yeah. Like, and I'm not being trick, I'm not doing any magic or trickery. It's very clear that if I don't have something for the dog that su supports his uh, system, yeah, like, <laughs> or his mouth, he's not going to comply. And that's exactly what I was saying, is he's going to come halfway, his nose is going to go, he's an animal, like, they, you, they, they're like Navy SEALs, they're like, they analyze you in like two seconds and they're gone. Yep. Yeah. So he comes up and realizes I got nothing here, and then he takes off, and then, and this is testing. If I'm like, oh, this comes, he's going to come around and go, oh, cool, you got something for me. I'll come to you. Right? So, I'm a dog owner way before a trainer. So, when I ask myself, okay, I love Elvis. He's my best friend. I've, I've known him for 10 years. I would never do anything to put him into danger. However, we're having problems with him running across a busy road. And I need to him to understand what recall is. He's telling me, I know what it is, but if you don't have anything in it for me, then I'm out of here, mm -hmm. right? So then what do I say? Huh, all right, so one, I could keep food on me all the time and bribe him with bags of food. Like there's a difference between a dog understanding like I'm gonna come to you because you told me and maybe, I, maybe I'll get food, maybe I won't. That's like, great. Yeah. But there, I think there's also a significant difference when you're doing what I just did and I'm like, Come here, buddy! Yay! And I'm doing everything I can to get the dog to me. Like, will he come? Great, awesome. And if you did that every time, you're hundred percent. Great, awesome. What if you don't have it? Yeah. You're screwed. Yeah, we don't have anything hundred percent. That's right. what. I'm, that's <laughs> what, that's my point. And in the dog training world, there's a lot of people on one side of the street going, "Don't correct dogs. It's abuse. It's terrible for them. It's gonna really screw them up." And I'm like, my dog just like told me to screw off like 15 times. Like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Then you can say, spend six months, really make the dog understand recall, but I'm like, I got five hours with my clients to, to make sure that their dog can do something. And can we do it fast? Absolutely, let's expedite this stuff. And the biggest difference is, is what are you going to do about it when the dog does decide to go boom, right? Because that we just very clearly stated and showed in real time that he doesn't do anything for me currently if there's food involved. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't build our relationship. That makes me just, me a Pez dispenser. The big underlying factor about why I think it's important as dog owners and, and as a responsibility to get the dog off leash, if we're gonna say, okay, I have an animal with four legs, especially with a hound. I mean, this dog can smell what's cooking in my neighbor's yard, yeah. right? If I can't responsibly reach out and communicate to him and say, and cause him some sort of aversive, if he's like, I know what you want, screw you. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh boy, wait a minute. Okay, coming back. And you're like, thank God, there's a semi coming yeah. or there's whatever, mm -hmm. right? So when, when we're talking about um, pressure, like we're not talking about, when we talk about a prong collar, I've used this, I don't think I've used this front collar once today. It's just on if I need it. When we're talking about e-collars, we're talking about communication, not correction. If we're constantly putting tools on to correct the dog, it's abuse. We're only there to teach them these things. So when he's there and I want to get his attention on that four that you guys couldn't feel, it's right there on the four. Alvis, come. Oh, yes, good boy. I do, I do this for a week and then teach him that I can touch him from a distance versus spending six months to give him a ton of food when he gets to me. Because right. there's gonna be a point where he's like, food, squirrel, food, squirrel. And then there's gonna be a point where I'm like, no, come back here. And my levels can go from zero to however I want. Same thing with 
Kids are like, Mommy, I want your beard. Sorry, you can't. And they start crying. What are you going to do? Be like, oh, yeah, here you go. Here's my beard because you're upset. Like, if a dog does something and I correct him, I'm like, tough cookies. Get your butt back here. Yeah. So we, we have no problem with crying kids. Yeah, no. <laughs> come. So anyway, so this is what we're doing. So Albus, come. Yes, good boy. And that's what we're doing with the e-collar back and forth. Um, so every single time, right now, he's on a non-corrective. It's pressure. It's, right. it's, all, it's all a point of pressure. So when I tell him, Albus, sit. And I tap their, yeah, you, good, <laughs> right? No correction, no, yeah, he he's not. That last week too, looking around. Yeah, he's like, hey, me. but there's not, that's the biggest thing is we, when, when people to the blind eye say, why are you using collars? Why are you shock dogs? Yeah, you're, you're, I'll take away all your equipment. I'm like, you can take away my equipment. I personally can still train a dog, but I won't be able to do it as fast and effective enough for my clients because they're not professional dog trainers. Right. And I think that a lot of uh, balanced dog trainers and balanced dog training, this is what we call it, where we use aversives and we use corrections to tell the dog, no, you can't do that. We get a lot of crap for take their tools away and see what they can do. I'm like, I would be just as successful without any tools, but I, I, I need to ap apply equipment for my owners or my, my client's sake because you guys aren't professional dog. You're coming to me to say, what can I do? And I'm gonna say, if you use this tool, you'll be a lot better. Yeah. You'll learn a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Your dog will stop choking themselves out. Your dog will recall on command instead of taking their sweet ass time. <laughs> so but there are like the, those one dimensional sided people. And um, I think that the way that I explain things has to make sense to my clients. So when they go out, people aren't like, why are you spiking your dog? Why are you shocking your dog? And you're like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. So that's why I give so much information about the tools. But like I said, um, it's very easy to, to, to sit there and go, oh, you need tools to work. But then like when I go, we, we, did, a, we did a podcast with Brother Christopher at the Monks of Newski, and he said it very easily and, and, and actually pretty hysterical. He said, you know, when people tell me that I need tools to work, I don't complain when I go into the dentist's office and they give me Novocaine. Could they do the job? Sure, but is it gonna be bad, you know, at the end of the day, of course. Could I drive my car without power steering? Sure, but is it gonna be beneficial and effective? Probably not. Is it going to be safe? I don't know. Right? So when we're talking about tools, it's just important to understand that they're not something that we depend on. It's something that helps and expedites my client's progress like that. Because it's like a professional rodeo or a bare, bare, bareback rider being like, yeah, I can do all this stuff. And then we throw Joe Schmo on it that's never done it before. They need equipment to handle these animals. And, yeah. and so anyway, when you go out and you use these type of equipment, you guys probably won't ever run into it, but it happens. People are bizarre. <laughs> anyway, you know, if I took your tools away, you wouldn't be able to do anything. I'm like, that's not true. I have millions of videos out there that I don't even touch my dogs with tools. But they're, they're my dog. Like they're, yeah. I train them. I can do that. But 95% of my clients that are coming in here to pay me to learn how to be better with their dog aren't going to be able to do it that quick. Right. If I give them a tool and they're like, <laughs> they're expedited. Like, right. It's the same thing. It's like, oh, you guys want to go to California? Okay, well, get to walking. <laughs> I'm going to take a plane. Why? Because it gets me there faster. Right. But there's, there's a lot of people who don't understand that. They're like, no, 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 no. There's other ways to do it. I'm like, sure. But it's going to take you a year, and you're going to be sore, and it's, it's not as fast. And you have a meeting to catch tomorrow? Good luck. Yeah. I'm going to take a plane. I'll see you there in a week. Right? right. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to get to the different places that we need to go. I think the important part is in understanding the, the idea of getting there properly and getting there humanely and getting there to, to the way that the dog understands are significant, like in, important in the process to make sure that we're not just putting equipment on a dog and going, look what I can do. It's not that at all. It's just to get you guys there faster.